Hello, welcome to this video course. In this video, you'll learn how to establish your LinkedIn profile as an authority figure. Before we start, let's take a look at the breakdown of what you'll be learning. I'll be giving you the best tips on how to impress others on LinkedIn with a professional photo on your profile. Then I'll guide you how to make an eye-catching headline to secure prospects, as well as building a strong profile with power achievements, links to your work, and recommendations. These steps will increase your appeal and boost your credibility to your targeted audience. Your LinkedIn profile is essentially an online resume. It's a platform where you project your professional self. It's a widely agreed fact that recruiters generally skip profiles that don't have a photo on them. Why? Because a profile without a photo displays no identity and it lacks credibility. In a study conducted by The Ladders, an eye-tracking heat map shows that the first thing that catches people's eyes is your profile photo. People generally spend 19% of their total visit time looking at your photo. LinkedIn also stated that profiles in LinkedIn search results with photos are seven times more likely to be clicked on than those without photos. It's important, obviously, to include a photo of yourself on your LinkedIn profile. So how do you make sure your profile photo really impresses? Here are four great tips contributed by various researchers and from professional recruiters and LinkedIn users. First off, choose a photo that looks like you in real life. The internet can be deceptive sometimes, and nobody likes being shown something only to find out later that it's not what was initially perceived or what they expected. In person, you have less than seven seconds to create a positive first impression. But that's normally done through a handshake, eye contact, the way you dress, how you carry yourself, and your energy. Online, though, that window of opportunity is cut short. It's just three seconds or even less. In this short time, the other person forms an opinion about you based on your profile picture and the accompanying info that's presented to them. They'll evaluate you and form a perception as to whether or not they can trust you. They'll even decide whether or not you're friendly or if you're approachable, maybe even what kind of personality you have. This first impression is very important and it'll help lay down the first layer of your credibility as a professional. So you need to make sure that you're making the right expression in your photo. Avoid making a straight face or a dull face. You might be wondering, is it appropriate to smile in a professional photo? Well, the answer is yes. A pleasant smile has been proven to stimulate positive feelings in new acquaintances and increase engagement as it portrays approachability. Dress as if you're going to work. Make sure what you wear depicts you in a manner that's appropriate for your field or your profession. Uh, here's another quick tip for photography and standing out. Avoid wearing white colored tops as they make you look washed out or unnoticed among all the other profiles in search results. Use colors like black or blue or even orange. They're more soothing and inviting. Next up, I'll be teaching you about the most ideal position for your face in the photo. To draw focused attention, position your face at the center of the frame. Make sure that your face takes up at least 60% of the dimensions within the frame, as it's the ideal dimension that ensures maximum direct focus of the eyes on your face within the frame. Lastly, keep a clean and tidy background. This will avoid unnecessary distractions and keep the viewer's eyes focused on your face. The best color for your background would be white or light blue, because it gives a sense of clarity and professionalism. Now let's look at your headline. In LinkedIn, your profile headline is what defines you. It's who you are. That's what you do. And of course, a short and clear description of yourself. Here are three important principles of what you must include in your headline if you want to stand out. First up, explain who you are. What's your profession and what position you're currently holding? Then write down who you can help to solve problems. That is to say, who needs your assistance professionally? Lastly, explain how you can help them and how you add value to what they already normally see in professionals like you. Here's an example of what a good LinkedIn headline looks like. Notice how the headline includes the three principles we just talked about. This is how your headline should look. Let's head on to your summary field in the profile. Here's where you fill in your abilities, profession, and achievements to tell people what you're capable of and why they should engage with you. Write down your various job functions and make sure they're all solutions oriented. For example, I'm a professional recruiter and I've recruited 10 valuable employees that increased the company's sales by 10% within a month. Follow the structure of description when you list down your job functions and prepare an introduction paragraph for each experience item you list on your profile. You can also add media files like videos to further explain your achievements. This is a great way to increase interest and trust in you as media files are generally more intriguing. The last step to strengthening your LinkedIn profile is by adding links and recommendations. 
Make use of the three URLs you're allowed on your profile and link to it. You should include links in your profile which lead viewers to relevant sites that showcase your work. For example, if you have a work-related blog or online portfolio, insert the link in your profile. This will further display your ability and professionalism to your prospects, and they'll be able to see for sure what you're capable of and know exactly how you can help them solve their problems. Recommendations, of course, are another great tool you can use to prove your professional claims and your value. Get your ex or current coworkers or supervisor to write about how well you work and what the great achievements are that you've accomplished around them. This creates concrete proof to support your claims on your profile. Well, these are the essential components needed to establish your LinkedIn profile as an authority figure. Follow these steps and you'll create a strong profile that can kickstart your journey to successful and fulfilling engagements on LinkedIn. But we're not done yet. Join me in the next module to learn even more. Hello, welcome to this video course. In this video, you'll learn how to use LinkedIn to find targeted clients. Before we start, let's take a look at the breakdown of what you'll be learning in this module. I'll be teaching you how to use the three functions of LinkedIn to gain targeted clients. You'll learn how to use the connections tier to develop engagement. Then utilizing introductions, you'll put yourself out there in the deep end of potential clients. You'll also learn how to utilize advanced search to gain more leads. So how can you develop engagement with potential clients on LinkedIn? You can use the add connections function. Click on the My Network tab and click connections. Then click on add connections. When you reach the next page, simply key in your email address and LinkedIn will automatically suggest your profile to related users. By using the connections tier system, you can even get in contact with people that you're not directly connected to. First connections are the people who are directly connected to you, while the second connections are people who are directly connected to them. And of course, the third tier connections or third connections are those directly connected to your second connections. This tier of connections allows you to invite people to connect with you if they're the second connections. You can also request to connect with third connections depending on their privacy settings. So this system effectively enables you to connect with almost anyone that you might want to get in touch with to have serious business conversations. And the more first connections you have, the more easily you can connect with others. Here are three tips to improve your LinkedIn connections. Send the messages on a weekly basis. This is the most straightforward way to connect with your people on LinkedIn. It's personal and engaging because it reaches that person directly. Start off with a simple introduction and make sure you include something that sparks a common interest with that person to increase the likelihood of them participating in a conversation. Other than that, you can ask them for an expertise request. This way, you can build a connection where it's based on how that person's expertise can aid you and you could potentially offer them some help as well. A connection built on intellectual ground and professional favors can be a very strong starting point. From there, you can expand your interaction and connect with them on other social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. Check out our other modules on using Facebook, Instagram, and other social media platforms for more info. Next up is utilizing introductions. When you don't seem to be connecting with a prospect even after using the previously mentioned techniques, the best thing is to send them an in-mail. In-mail is a function that allows you to send a private message to anyone on LinkedIn, regardless of whether you're connected to them or not. It's like sending a cold email or sending a private message to someone you're not friends with on Facebook. So here's where you can introduce yourself via in-mail. Inquire for your needs or propose your offer to engage with prospects. You can also search through recommendations to find more prospects. Search for people who have just given or received a recommendation because you'd stand a better chance to succeed in an introduction to people like them. Many have been said to have higher success in approaching people as such because of the ongoing positive association that was made earlier. In simpler words, when people are feeling positive in promoting others, they are more open and welcoming to accept your invitation. Lastly, utilizing advanced search to search for high converting leads. Advanced search is one of the most useful and effective functions of LinkedIn. It allows you to search LinkedIn for anyone on a vast amount of criteria, even if you don't know exactly who to expect to turn up in the search. Utilize the many criteria boxes LinkedIn provides you and narrow down your search in reaching the most ideal clients you want to engage with. Look for the advanced button right beside your search text box right here, and you'll be looking at an array of criteria you can use to narrow down your search. Here are five strategies to help you further customize your search to reach targeted prospects. Generalizing your search. If you're looking for your targeted contacts based on the company they work for, apply maximum focus on the title and industry fields to find your prospects. Narrowing your search. Apply heavy use on the keywords fields to narrow your search results when you need to reach people within a specific niche of an industry. Targeting specific individuals. 
Use primarily the company or keywords field plus the title field to help you find specific individuals in your targeted companies or industries. Helping your product or service sell itself. Searching for the customers of your clients can get those people interested about your product or service. This is a marketing strategy called the poll marketing. Poll marketing gets your clients customers demanding for your service, which in result will gain you sales from your client. Reaching out through service professionals. Search for consultants who are hired by your prospects by using the title and industry fields or by choosing consultants, contractors from the interested in drop down list. Because LinkedIn might help you discover a shared connection or bond between you and these consultants, you can ask those consultants for help in reaching your prospects. Well, we've reached the end of this module. You've learned how to use LinkedIn to search for targeted clients. Head on to our next module to learn more about growing your connections bigger using LinkedIn. Hello, welcome to this video course. In this video, you'll learn how to grow vast business connections. Before we start, let's take a look at the simple breakdown of what you'll be learning. I'll be guiding you through using LinkedIn groups to expand your network. You'll learn what a LinkedIn group is, why you should use it, how to join, how to identify a good group, and what to do after joining it. First of all, what is a LinkedIn group? LinkedIn groups consist of a pool of people with certain things in common. For example, location, expertise, industry, special skills, interests, and more. By correctly utilizing these groups, you widen your network effectively on a great scale. Joining relevant and useful LinkedIn groups will be your most essential tool for driving high converting leads. However, many do the common mistake of joining specific groups that are only related to their industry or expertise. Yes, it's probably the first thing that comes to your mind to join a group related to what your business is selling. However, this is not where you'll find your ideal clients. Rather, may I put it this way? You won't make the cut because the groups will be full of your peers and competitors. So unless you're outstandingly above your peers and competitors, it's best to survey and research closely on the groups you're planning to join. Aim for groups that have more demand than supply. That way you'll stand a better chance to gain interest from the group members. So how do you join a LinkedIn group anyway? To find groups, go to the search bar up here in your homepage, hover over the icon that has three lines, select groups from the drop down box. Then you could type in your keywords in the search bar to find your ideal group to engage with. You need to narrow down your search by adding a keyword that's relevant to your target market. If you're networking with business owners, simply add the word business or entrepreneurs. It'll help targeting your search to add a more ideal pool of prospects. So how do you identify what is a good LinkedIn group? There's regular discussion going on. This goes to show that the group members are active and engaged. There will be potential clients in there because there's demand. The quality of discussions. Are the discussions in the group spam-like and not systematic, or is it full of discussions with useful content? This will help you identify if the group members are potential clients or not, as well as aiding you in researching what's in demand and if you can offer your expertise to engage with them. The most popular job function in the group is your target market. For example, you want to see business as the main function in the group statistics if you're targeting business owners. This should serve as an indication of a quality group when you search for a group to join. So what should you do to expand your network after you've joined a good LinkedIn group? Once you join a new group, reach out to the group admin and ask, what would you like to see more of in your group? Here are some questions you can ask the group admin and try to offer the group. For example, is there anything you can share to the group that can offer value to the group members? This action is a good approach that will display you as a beneficial addition to the group as you appear to be active in involvement. In the long run, some group admins will likely let you share a good deal of your content in their group. It's also important to spend at least a week just going through reading and commenting on other people's threads. This will help you build connections with your ideal prospects. In discovery of potential clients, you should also be making connection requests and sending them in mail, etc. Well, that's all for this module. The learnings of this module should help you gain larger and better business connections. You can refer to the previous module on ways to engage with targeted clients and apply on your effort to reach out for more connections through joining groups. I'll see you in the next one. Hello, welcome to this video course. In this module, you'll learn how to optimize LinkedIn SEO to maximize traffic. Before we start, let's take a look at the simple breakdown of what you'll be learning. In this module, you will learn how to optimize your LinkedIn search engine optimization, SEO for short, to maximize traffic. By carefully and strategically customizing your LinkedIn profile URL, then using keywords, anchor links, and backlinks to increase the percentage of your profile being searched and viewed. 
Just by implementing small changes that shape your profile with the common aspects people are looking for on LinkedIn, you are optimizing your chances of coming up when searched to a higher percentage than before. First up, customizing your profile URL. Most LinkedIn profile URLs will be made up of meaningless letters and numbers well, before you customize it. However, you have the choice to personalize it to anything you wish based on availability. The best customization is to put your name as your profile URL because it's the most ideal way to get the URL immediately identifiable as you. Not only is this an easier way for clients to find your specific profile, it's also a great way to increase returns to your profile faster and more often for both your potential clients and for yourself. Make sure to keep it clean and short. If in any case your name is not available or it's already taken, try using recognizable variations of your name or initials. This is a great way to ensure people can easily search for you as connecting your LinkedIn profile URL to your name will also allow you to be found easily by real life connections. It's because most people recall best another person's name as compared to other aspects of their professional profile. Next up, we'll be customizing your overall profile with keywords. This is a very important and essential step in optimizing your LinkedIn SEO because each time somebody searches on LinkedIn, the content of your profile will determine if you will appear on that person's search or not. Therefore, it's very important that you do thorough research on the most searched keywords and identify related useful ones to incorporate them into your profile. This will greatly increase your chances of popping up on the search engine. Research on your desired clients and make a list of common keywords used within that field and industry. You can also use the Google AdWords keyword tool to figure out which terms will increase your likelihood of being discovered when searched. After you've identified the most searched and related keywords, your next step is to furnish your profile into a keyword rich profile. First of all, make sure that your job title uses keywords that people will likely use when they're searching for the expertise that you offer. For example, if you're an expert in copywriting, make sure the phrase copywriter appears in your job title. Be strategic with the content in your description. Make use of the keywords you've researched by incorporating them into your previous job descriptions, skills, and about me section as much as possible. Pay special attention to strategically using keywords in the titles of your posts in order to optimize their chances of higher rankings. Secondly, instead of writing out full paragraphs on the details of your expertise or experience, use bullet point form to list them out. Make sure to incorporate a variety of relevant keywords. Formatting your descriptions with bullet points also makes your profile easier to read. Studies have shown that lengthy profile descriptions can be a pain to the eye and reduce the willingness of a reader to pursue the need to go through your profile. This means that people would rather skip your profile and go on to another one just because it's hard to read. Moving on, let's talk about anchor links and backlinks. Anchor links are links on a page that bring you to a specific place on that page. Anchor links can be helpful when you want to bring a website visitor to a specific spot on a long page. You can add up to three anchor links of your own website to your LinkedIn profile contact info section. This allows you to showcase a variety of work to potential clients that may be looking for different types of content. You can target a wide range of different clients by providing various references to your business. On the other hand, backlinks are incoming links to a web page. When a web page links to any other page, it's called a backlink. Insert backlinks to your profile page from your own personal website, be it a company site or your own personal blog. Whatever further showcases your experience and expertise. This will result in your LinkedIn profile ranking higher and therefore increase the chance of appearing in the top of the search results. When there are more options offered to others to find out more about your business, the amount of views that your LinkedIn profile gets will be increased as well. Therefore, your LinkedIn profile should have lots of unique content and be updated regularly. An easy way to keep the account fresh is to populate the profile with a stream of regular blog posts. Similar to Twitter, you can strengthen the profile by building up a list of credible connections. Well, we've come to the end of this module. By applying the strategies above to optimize your LinkedIn SEO, you'll be able to maximize the traffic to your profile and achieve higher contacts with potential clients. We're not done yet though. I'll see you in the next one. Hello, welcome back to this video course. In this module, you'll learn how to customize messaging to expand your network. Before we start, let's take a look at a simple breakdown of what you'll be learning. In this module, you'll learn how to draft a message that promises successful engagement and connection. I'll guide you through how to sculpt your subject line, greeting, introduction, body of content, and the closing of an outstanding, high converting message that you can use on LinkedIn messaging. Messaging in LinkedIn is called InMail. 
You can use InMail to send messages to engage directly with another LinkedIn member you're not connected to. If you have a basic free account, you must upgrade to a premium account to use InMail. LinkedIn InMail runs with the system where you receive a specific number of InMail credits based on your subscription type. You can key in related keywords or search specifically for the person you would like to send a message to. Then right beside their name, click on the InMail button to private message them. So now I shall show you how to write a highly engaging and converting message. First up, your message is subject line. When you send an invitation to connect with someone, you will notice that the subject line box is already automatically filled in. For other messages that you send, do make sure to add a subject line that clearly states the purpose of you sending this message. It's important to intrigue the recipient with your subject line because studies sourced by Convince and Convert have shown that 33% of email recipients open email based on the subject line alone. If your subject line does not intrigue your recipient to open the message, what's the point of having a winner message in the first place if they don't open it? So how to make sure your subject line is good? You need to make sure the recipient thinks that your message was written specifically for them. So it is essential to make your subject line personal and attention grabbing at the same time. The easiest way to convince your recipient that the message is specially written to them is by addressing and mentioning the recipient's name in the subject line. This way has been proven to increase open rates by 26%. Keep your subject line short and straight to the point as well because readers in general do not click into a message with a long subject line. Take a look at this statistics whereby you can see what should the ideal number of characters your subject line be. Next up, greeting. Start your LinkedIn message with a short and personal greeting. Again, you should mention the recipient's name here as well to ensure that he, she will more likely to pay attention to the message at hand. Here's a sample greeting you can use as a reference. Hey Samuel, I've read your latest article on the evolution of internet marketing in the past 10 years and absolutely loved it. Great insights and inspiring. This is a great way to get your recipient's attention. It shows how you know about your recipient and that this greeting is made personal only to him or her. All right, moving on to your introduction. Just like any other first meeting, you have to introduce yourself to the recipient so he or she knows who you are and what you do. Do not jump straight into pitching your offer or idea because it will most likely turn off your recipient. So start off with introducing who you are, including your name, expertise, or position, and a very brief line to explain on your company. Here's an example you can refer to. Now you've reached the main body of your message, which is the content part. Here's where you draft out a content that would serve the purpose of you writing this message. So ask yourself, why are you sending this message in the first place? Is it for an inquiry? Are you trying to pitch an offer or idea? Or you're trying to create engagement to build connection for future needs? If your goal and purpose of writing this message is specific, make sure you get right to the point in your message. This is to avoid wasting your recipient's time and risk having that recipient losing focus or end up not finishing the message. Let me give you three main points to help guide you to draft your content. In order to make your recipient feel engaged in your message, your content should be conversational in the sense that it will spark an urge of wanting to reply in your recipient upon reading your message. Bear in mind that your message should be based on the ground of wanting to start a conversation and build connection, not to seal a deal straight there and then. Then always make sure that it is short, brief, straight to the point, but at the same time sufficient enough to ensure your recipient get a full understanding of the purpose of the message. One great way to intrigue conversation and can increase the chances of your recipient replying your message will be to ask for advice, opinion, or referral. This works magic because it gives them a compelling reason to reply. By doing this, you'll make them feel like you value and need their expertise and network. Lastly, how to write your message is closing. Closing is not just for sales emails. It's also essential in every kind of messaging you do. The most commonly used closing line is, do let me know if you're interested. This kind of closing is the most basic and polite approach, but it normally does not get high response rates because it's nowhere near to being a call to action closing. To ensure your recipient will reply to your message, you need to provide a highly specific call to action closing. Most people are busy. Sometimes they forget to reply and they simply won't spend the time thinking of what to reply. Therefore, your closing should provide a clear instruction. For example, would you be able to answer a call at 2 p.m. to further discuss? This approach 
makes the next step clear to the client and will increase response rates. According to a research done by psychologist Robert Sutton, people are more responsive and willing to help if they've been given clear directions. And that marks the end of this module. You've learned how to strategically draft a compelling message that will help you engage with potential clients on LinkedIn to expand your network. Check out the next module for more. Hello, welcome back to the video course. In this module, you will learn how to use LinkedIn ads to generate leads. Before we start, let's take a look at the simple breakdown of what you'll be learning. In this module, you will learn about the basics of LinkedIn ads, what it is, and why you should use it. I will also explain to you the two types of most commonly used LinkedIn ads, which are the sponsored content ads and the text ads. I will then guide you through how to create and use your own LinkedIn ads for your business to generate leads. So let's get started. What is a LinkedIn ad? LinkedIn ad is a self-service advertising platform where advertisers can deliver highly relevant and targeted messages to its audiences. LinkedIn ads can be very useful to gain high converting leads and help expand your business. Here's two main reasons you should use LinkedIn ads for your business. LinkedIn provides great targeting options. This includes the ability to target its audiences by their job title, employer, role, skills, and interests. LinkedIn profiles contain more details and up-to-date professional information compared to what people list on their personal profiles on other social platforms. This platform allows you to set up ad accounts whereby you can control the total advertising cost by setting a campaign start and also end date. This way you can estimate and plan your maximum daily budget. You have the choice to spend as little or as much as you'd like. It all depends on the allocated budget that you set. In addition, LinkedIn's self-service advertising platform has a similar concept to those offered by Google and Facebook. For example, it allows you to design different types of ads, create logical groupings, define bids for specific campaigns, and measure performance with metrics such as impressions, clicks, and conversions. LinkedIn's self-service platform offers two distinct ad types, sponsored content ads and text ads. While the two ad formats have some key distinctions, they're both similar in that they offer a complete bid and budget control, precise targeting, and content that can drive significant sales and leads for your business. The differences between the two are where they are displayed and how you create them. So what's the difference between these two ads? Sponsored content ads is commonly used for content that you can sponsor so that it appears in the newsfeed of your targeted audience. It's similar to newsfeed updates on Facebook. Sponsored content ad has the flexibility of boosting your content across all devices. It gets your message out on desktop, tablet, and mobile. Its advertising mechanism works by attracting new followers to your company or showcase page to reach just the right audience with precise targeting options. On the other hand, Text ads appear around the typical web pages that people see while being on LinkedIn. They're similar text advertisement banners to what you would spot on your Facebook page, YouTube, or any other common websites. Text ads are extremely widely used as it can start generating leads within minutes. It is simple to use as you only need to add a compelling headline, description, and a 50 by 50 pixel image. You get to set your advertisement budget according to your preference and you can measure your ads performance in Campaign Manager. So. How do you create your LinkedIn ads? In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I will be guiding you on setting up a sponsored update campaign on LinkedIn. To create a sponsored content ad, you'll need an account linked to your LinkedIn company page or showcase page to create a sponsored update. If you haven't already created an account, you can start by setting up a business account through the LinkedIn campaign manager. So once you've created a business account, head over to linkedin.com slash ad slash accounts to access LinkedIn campaign manager. You will then be landed on this page where LinkedIn greets you, welcome to Campaign Manager. Here you can choose to either use sponsored updates and text ads. In this tutorial, we'll be going with sponsored updates, so select the first option. Then you will be required to create an ad account for the campaign. To create an ad account, you will need to set up a company or showcase page. You can easily create it within your LinkedIn account, whereby it only takes a couple of minutes to fill in the required information, and you're done. Then add in some basic account information for your new campaign, your company name, your account name, and select your preferred currency. So now you'll be customizing your campaign, whereby you need to enter a name for your campaign as well as a desired language. Then it's time for you to move on to the content selection and creation for your campaign. LinkedIn will offer a list of available contents where you can browse, choose, and determine what content you'd like to sponsor. Campaign Manager enables you the choice to either sponsor existing updates or create a new sponsored update. If you already have an existing update of your own that you'd like to boost, select the corresponding checkbox and click Next. And then, if you'd prefer to start from scratch, just select 
create new sponsored content, and follow the instructions. Moving on, you'll be prompted to customize the target audience and location of your preference. You need to determine whom you want your content to reach. LinkedIn Campaign Manager enables you to choose from a number of targeting criteria such as location, job title, company name, member age, etc. Then lastly, you have to set a budget and duration for your campaign. You're allowed to select one of two different bid types, CPC, which stands for pay when someone clicks on your ad, or CPM, which stands for pay when someone sees your ad. And from there, the campaign manager will suggest a bid and daily budget. You can also customize the start date of the campaign as you like. And you're done. Simply click and launch your campaign. After launching a sponsored update campaign, you can track its progress in the campaign manager homepage under the sponsored updates view. Here's a sample of how the dashboard looks. You can track performance metrics, turn campaigns on and off, adjust bids, and make changes to the targeting criteria. You can also track the success of each update and test different formats until you found the one that best suits your business. Well, this is the end of the video course. Thank you for following the modules, and I wish you all the best in bringing your business to the next level with LinkedIn.